Listen to this. How do cars shape our world? It sounds like a simple question, but to answer it, we need to go back, way back, before cars, before motorways, before the idea of driving even existed. It all starts here, with an invention that didn't even move. In the 1760s, James Watt built a steam engine, not to power a car, but to pump water out of mines. Now let's add some music and sound design. How do cars shape our world? It sounds like a simple question, but to answer it, we need to go back, way back, before cars, before motorways, before the idea of driving even existed. It all starts here, with an invention that didn't even move. In the 1760s, James Watt built a steam engine, not to power a car, but to pump water out of mines. Pretty incredible transformation, right? In case you didn't know, this is the second part of a two-part series, where I show you how to create a Vox-style documentary in Canva. Sound design is usually a section reserved for a brief run-through at the end of my tutorials. Today, I'm taking a deep dive into how to utilize the Canva audio library to curate professionally sounding sound design tracks for your videos. Let's start with a simple question. What exactly is sound design? Hey, Lily. Sound design is the art of creating and manipulating audio elements to enhance a story. It includes everything from ambient sounds to special effects that bring scenes to life. In relation to the Vox style of editing, sound design is often subtle and carefully layered to complement narration and music, adding depth without overwhelming the main content. So, with the Vox style in mind, we need to take note of an important word there, subtlety. And we need to absolutely avoid the following cliché samples. <gasps> with that in mind, let's start designing. If you are a Patreon member, you can access the full Canva template without sound design or music so you can follow along. We first need to lay down our music tracks. That way we can adjust the audio level on our samples as we go, instead of after the music is added. With the project open, navigate to the audio library and search for Arthur Benson. You might want to write that name down. This composer's music is ideal for documentary editing because its instrumental, comedic effect, and dynamic pacing help set the tone and mood effortlessly. Its natural rises and falls allow for smooth transitions between scenes, making it easy to build a cohesive narrative. Let's put that to the test. Select the track called Sneaking Into the Kitchen and place it at the start of the timeline, like so, Let's have a quick listen. How do cars shape our world? It sounds like a simple question, but to answer it, we need- The intro to this track is ideal for setting an enthusiastic tone, but I think this placement detracts from that feeling. Plus, I really want to put emphasis on that opening question, so let's move the start of the track to just after the narration and give it a quick preview. How do cars shape our world? It sounds like a simple question, but to answer it, we need to go back, way back. Bingo. Setting the correct levels on your music track is crucial. While Canva doesn't offer much in the line of audio controls, making sure the narration is protected from all other audio elements should be your number one goal. Now let's play out the next few seconds of the clip along with the narration so you can appreciate how well this kind of music gels with a good voiceover. It sounds like a simple question, but to answer it, we need to go back, way back, before cars, before motorways, before the idea of driving even existed. It all starts here, with an invention that didn't even move. Those repeating pauses in the music create ideal sections to make slight edits to draw attention to a particular word or statement. We'll cover more of this later. I wanted to include more than one track in this composition, so I scanned through the timeline in search for the ideal section to make the transition. Ships crossed oceans on steam, cities filled with smoke. The world was moving faster, but it was also getting dirtier. But it was also getting dirtier. So here, we can insert a musical dropout which not only allows us to add dramatic timing 
in relation to the narration, but it also allows for a seamless transition to new music. Ships crossed oceans on steam, cities filled with smoke. The world was moving faster, but it was also getting dirtier. The world was moving faster, but it was also getting dirtier. The world was moving faster, but it was also getting dirtier. Then, in 1885, some... This can be a good time to change the pacing of your edit with more energetic music, if desired. For good consistency, I have chosen another track by Arthur Benson called Simple Pleasantries. Ships crossed oceans on steam, cities filled with smoke. The world was moving faster, but it was also getting dirtier. Then, in 1885, something changed. Carl Benz introduced the patent motor wagon. It doesn't affect the pacing of the edit dramatically, but I think it adds to the progression of the storytelling. Again, scan through the timeline and search for any moments where a minor edit can give dramatic pause or simply add to the fluidity of the edit. Electric vehicles, cleaner, quieter, a solution, or at least that's the idea. quieter, a solution, or at least that's the idea. But here's the catch. When you reach the end of the composition, make sure to add a fade out to the final music clip. Time for some sound design. Open the audio section and filter for sound effects. The samples we choose for a composition might not always relate directly to the storyline, but sometimes, We'll pick something like a 1940s Ford car engine. It not only aligns perfectly with the appearance of the Model T, but also signals the start of a journey through its ignition sound, subtly suggesting the beginning of a story. Position the sample so it activates at the exact time we set the car to appear, and let's give it a quick preview. How do cars shape our world? It sounds like a simple question, but to answer it... Way too loud. Like I said earlier, we need to preserve the clarity of the narration, so always reduce your sound design elements, so they are just about noticeable. How do cars shape our world? It sounds like a simple question, but to answer it... We it's better to risk someone not hearing the sample, rather than not hearing or even detracting from the narration. So with the basic theory on sound design covered, let's plow through the rest of the composition and feel free to question the use of any samples in the comments section. For the timeline movement section, search for stopwatch tick. Place it at the start of the timeline movement, crop it, and adjust the volume accordingly. We need to go back, way back, before cars, before motorways, before the idea of driving even existed, it all starts here. Now search for water bubble popping. Select this one and crop it down to your preferred version. Align it to the first timeline marker and you can probably leave the volume as even is. existed. It all starts here. Search for keyboard typing four. Crop it, position it, and reduce the volume substantially. With an invention that did You know, the more I dive into sound design, the more I realize it's not just about creativity, it's about structure. You're thinking about pacing, layering, and how each element fits together logically. That kind of thinking maps perfectly to what you'll learn at Brilliant.org, today's sponsor. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. You don't just watch, you solve real problems as you go. That hands-on approach is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lectures. One course I've been exploring is programming with Python. You start building simple programs from day one, and along the way, you develop a strong intuition for computer logic, how systems work, how to break down complex problems, and how to debug when something's not quite right. It's helped me bring more structure and clarity to the way I approach edits. 
And if you're someone who enjoys building things layer by layer, you'll get a lot out of it. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Lily's Tech Tips or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to the tutorial. Next, search for writing pencil A. and set it to come in as the sketch animation activates. With an invention that didn't even move. For the arrow animation, search for pencil write seven. The steam engine. As you will notice, the length of this sample is too long for the animation in question. Let's fix that. Align the end of the sample to where it should finish, then crop the start point so it activates at the correct time. Built a steam engine. It sounds a bit too harsh, so let's fade the start and end, then adjust the volume. Built a steam engine. I built a steam engine. Next search for camera shutter eight and place it where the vintage image of the water pump comes in. But to pump water out of mine. Repeat the pops and typewriter sounds where necessary. And let's move on to this collage scene where we need to search for Relay Clicks 15. Place one at each image animation and set the appropriate levels. It wasn't fast, but it worked. Now search for Film Projector Run and align it with the old train footage. But it worked, and it turned steam power into transportation. Move on to this scene, and for the bullet point entries, search for relay clicks and place a variety of them over the bullet points to avoid too much repetition. Personal, private, and powered by a combustion engine. Do the same for the appearance of the Ford car parts didn't happen until 1908. When we start the movement animation for the various cars, we can begin with the same Ford car sample that we used for the opening. By the 1950s, the car wasn't just... Now, search for car drive on dirt. Place it just as the vintage truck animates into the frame and adjust the volume. By the 1950s, the car wasn't just a machine anymore. And over the decades, it got big. Now, search for Car Drive Away 8. Place it on the timeline and crop out the beginning so it begins with a more ear catching effect. Crop the truck sample back and place the new sample at the start of the SUV section so it complements the match cut we set up previously. By the 1950s, the car wasn't just a machine anymore. And over the decades, it got bigger, faster, louder. Next, search for Whip Whoosh 12, reduce the volume, and align it with the passing tree. 1950s, the car wasn't just a machine. The car wasn't just a machine. Do the same for the rest of the trees and slightly adjust the volume if needed. Make sure the SUV sample ends exactly when we come to this section for a dramatic pause. How we built our cities. But move on to the article animation and let's search for marker right six to use with the highlighter animation. Idea. But here's the catch. Those cars still need electric. Continue to add typing samples where necessary, then search for bell ding and align it with the subtitle here. To reshape, to keep driving. As a reminder, you can get this whole template on my Patreon with and without sound design if you would like to follow along with the tutorial. Now let's preview the finished product. How do cars shape our world? It sounds like a simple question, but to answer it, we need to go back, way back, before cars, before motorways, before the idea of driving even existed, it all starts here, 
with an invention that didn't even move. In the 1760s, James Watt built a steam engine, not to power a car, but to pump water out of mines. That steam engine kickstarted the Industrial Revolution. It powered factories, fueled production, and quite literally changed the world. But then, someone asked a new question. What if we could make it move? In 1814, George Stevenson built the first full-scale working steam locomotive. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't fast, but it worked. And it turned steam power into transportation. For the first time, people and goods could move quickly across entire countries. But steam didn't stop there. By the mid-1800s, factories ran on steam. Ships crossed oceans on steam. Cities filled with smoke. The world was moving faster. But it was also getting dirtier. Then, in 1885, something changed. Carl Benz introduced the patent motor wagon, the first practical automobile. It wasn't built for factories or railways. It was built for people. A new kind of freedom, personal, private, and powered by a combustion engine. But the real revolution didn't happen until 1908, when Henry Ford launched the Model T, the first car for the masses. Suddenly, the car wasn't a luxury. It was everywhere, and that changed everything. Cities expanded, highways appeared, entire economies grew around the car. By the 1950s, the car wasn't just a machine anymore. And over the decades, it got bigger, faster, louder. It shaped how we lived, where we worked, how we built our cities. But it also shaped something else. Air pollution, congestion, communities divided by endless roads. So now we're trying to fix it. Enter electric vehicles, cleaner, quieter, a solution, or at least that's the idea. But here's the catch. Those cars still need electricity and building them still requires mining for minerals like lithium and cobalt. So the real question isn't just how do cars shape our world? It's how much of that world are we willing to reshape to keep driving? Because sometimes to move forward, we need to look back at how we got here. <laughs>